सो आई थिंक रेकर्डिंग हेज स्टार्टेड सो गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड गुड इवनिंग स्मृति भैया एंड दिस इज नॉट ए वेब टॉक दिस इज जस्ट ए यू नो क्लासरूम वेर आई हैव शेयर द लिंक विथ माई यू नो क्लास पी जी सेकेंड इयर यू नो क्लास स्टूडेंट्स सो टूडे स्मृति भैया ही इज टीचिंग इन द Uh, center for let me say it center for gandhian studies what is that center bhaiya i'm just forgetting center for gandhian thought and peace studies uh, center for gandhian uh, thought G- gandhian thought and peace studies right yes so since uh, he has been teaching in that center i thought that he will be the appropriate person to you know give a critical Uh, estimation on Gandhi's political philosophy. Uh, Smriti Bhaiya, I think uh, I have tried my level best to tell them according to their syllabus uh, what is Gandhi's concept of Satyagraha, Swaraj, and Sarvadaya means and end. Right, whatever they are in their syllabus, I have you know discussed with them. Uh, but right now, uh, I am. I think I urge that you will tell us. uh how to you know understand gandhian political philosophy in a in a critical manner right so yeah. how to evaluate gandhian political philosophy i wish that uh, you will speak i mean it's one hour so within one hour you try to complete then you know some discussion yeah, yeah, I, 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 i will try so to... now uh, i i give everything to you you may continue right now. thank you thank you um... himangsu and it's a pleasure to um, talk uh, actually if you are a um, teacher it's, it's a, nothing gives you pleasure uh, than uh, talking to students so that way i'm really um, you know um, excited to talk um, on gandhi because the, i have been doing that since last 10 years uh, or more than 10 years actually so um, uh, i'm really happy that you know you have given me this opportunity to talk about gandhi uh, small uh, introduction so i yeah. want some of my students to unmute their video so that the speaker will feel good while since this is a classroom actually uh, the teacher is supposed to see your face because your face gives us a strength that so that I, is that is true that so is absolutely i or, true. Uh, i or some of my students uh, if they just uh, unmute their video it will be a you know great thing yeah that right it's like you know talking to a <laughs> true and we have been doing that since last two years but it will be really great if you uh, you know keep the video okay thank you thank you pradeep and uh, is there any okay thank you shubhrat okay or yeah. two or three students okay thank you priyanka now i think it's enough actually yeah, it's yeah? Enough. It's enough. It's enough. Please, no, it, it 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 gives a sense of uh, real class yeah yeah so um, yeah so um you know the title that uh, is given to me uh, is gandhi's political philosophy critical um, estimation um where to start i um, really do not um, know but let's start with uh, you know one sentence from gandhi's autobiography and um, yeah so i quote gandhi what i want to achieve what i have been striving and pining to achieve these 30 years is self realization to see god face to face to attain moksha and gandhi was writing this sentence in 1925 when he was uh, you know around 55 56 years of old so he was writing that what i have been doing these last 30 years means uh, you know roughly the time that um, you know maybe uh, maybe the time that um, he counts from 9 maybe 1895 um, so that was the time when he was active in south africa and that was the time when gandhi was doing politics um 
so since you know i mean so the last 30 years because it is not that gandhi is writing this in 1948 this was a, so gandhi's autobiography was written in 1925 so uh, he's talking about the last 30 years that means the years that he was active in public sphere and we know you know what gandhi was doing uh, in those years if you look at those years starting from 90, 1890s you know 1895 or you know uh, 1890 uh, 1890s so you find that gandhi was not doing any you know gandhi was not practicing any religion he was not doing any religious thing he was active in in movements in political movements he was active in satyagraha he was active in you know what um, earlier you know she was she used the term passive resistance she was doing civil disobedience um you know she she was active in movements he was she, he was active in political movements be it in south africa or coming back to you know india so she has not done any religious activities per se so that is clear then why he is writing this sentence that whatever i have been doing you know in the last 30 years it is in pursuance of a single goal that is uh, self realization or or seeing god face to face or uh, you know or uh, atten attainment of moksha so that means gandhi was of the view that when he was active in 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 protest movements against the you know government uh, in south africa or in india he was he was practicing religion how this is possible because he you know because he did not do any religious thing to understand this contradiction you know um, that i am talking about we need to understand you know one more formulation of gandhi gandhi once uh, you know um, talked about uh, seven social sins and that was not his original idea that he got from a you know maybe from a reader who uh, wrote uh, to him um, so anyway so he compiled that and you know the seven sins one of them was politics without morality is a is a sin so there you get the connection why he is talking about moksha or self-realization or you know seeing god face to face when he was busy in you know in participating or leading movements so gandhi's idea of politics and his idea of morality are inseparable from each other you know they are not watertight compartments to be uh, you know looked at um as as uh, separate uh, spheres nothing to do with each other so so this is not the case Gandhi's idea of politics was inextricably linked with his idea of morality. And what was Gandhi's idea of morality? Performance of duty. Gandhi's idea of morality was performance of duty without being selfish. Okay, so you have to do self-sacrifice, you have to think about others, you have to, you know, serve the society. That is Gandhi's idea of uh, sacrifice and that is Gandhi's idea of observance of your duty and that is related to morality according to, according to Gandhi. So what is Gandhi's understanding of politics? Normally we define politics as you know the activity uh, which is concerned with the state number one. Number two the activity which is concerned with uh, you know uh, power and authority. Interestingly Gandhi and uh, does not subscribe to these two views regarding politics he doesn't think that you know uh, to do politics you you need uh, political power and to do politics you don't need to be associated with the state because if you look at gandhi's political you know uh, life gandhi was not uh, you know the president of congress party for a long time he was the president of congress party only in 1924 that too for one year you know so gandhi never 
you know, except that year, Gandhi was never the president of Congress party, and Gandhi also resigned from the Congress party uh, after some years. So the point here is that this person was defining politics not in terms of state, not in terms of uh, you know, not in terms of uh, political power. So he uh, understood politics as the active engagement for um, you know um, uh, active engagement with the affairs of the society with the objective to benefit the society even at the cost of your own self-interest so selfless service of your neighborhood is politics according to gandhi why i'm saying the neighborhood because gandhi thought that we should not be very worried about what is happening in the distant places we should be concerned more about our own neighborhood if you you know uh, if you improve the conditions of your neighborhood and if everybody does that then the entire nation will improve and you know and uh, if everybody in the world does that then the then the entire world will also develop so gandhi thought that you know you should fo focus more on your neighborhood and now um, you know this is what gandhi understood uh, uh, by the term, uh, by the term politics. Now uh, you have to understand one more thing that Gandhi thought that um, to be religious, to be moral, to be ethical, or to attain moksha, to attain salvation, you don't need to go to the Himalayas to do meditation you have to and you must not do that what you need to do you need to um, you need to stay in the society you need to actively engage with the society with uh, the aim to do social service selflessly and it is gandhi said it is possible to do this even remaining without family sorry even remaining within the family and remain remaining within the society not without it so to you know to do uh, or to 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 pursue your spiritual goals that that is moksha according, according to gandhi to 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 pursue moksha you do not need to go to the hills you can do that while you are at home while you are you know living with your family members but there is a caution it is not simply living with your family members it has to be something else means even if you are living inside your family inside your household you will not be you know uh, restricted by your self-interest by your only near and dear ones the entire world will be your family your your neighborhood is your family it is like keeping uh, you know uh, it is like water on the lotus leaf or the lily leaf or in odia you know um, if you put water on 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 that uh, you know leaf Saru patra opare, you know, padma ya kanyu patra opare. If you put water, this water will not stick to that lotus leaf. So it it will just, you know, it will uh, it will it will not touch. It will be on that leaf, but it will not touch. If you, you know, just uh, uh, put down that water, the lotus leaf will not, uh, you know, look wet. It will be dry. How? Gandhi says. And Gandhi takes this from uh, from the Gita, you know, the most powerful and the most uh, read uh, part of uh, the epic Mahabharat, the uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And Gandhi takes this, you know, uh, philosophy of detachment from the Gita. And for Gandhi, the most important part of Gita is Karma Yoga. That means you do your duty, do not expect you know any result for that and interestingly gandhi gives a reinterpretation to the concept of you know to 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 to, to this book uh, gita what is gita norm you know understood you know usually gita is understood as a text 
which was you know delivered by um, uh, you know by by lord uh, krishna to his devotee arjun because arjun was uh, you know she she was not able to decide what to do in the mahabharat war so um, you know uh, uh, krishna is making everything stand still and he is taking the chariot to uh, to the middle of the mahabharat uh, battlefield and he starts explaining what is life and you know and it so it is the philosophy of life so normally gita is and then at the end of that uh, you know um, that uh, that um, that book or you know that 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 address uh, uh, by krishna to arjun krishna urges arjun to 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 fight to take up arms and and to fight this is what uh, is the message of gita as understood by most of us gandhi did not take this view gandhi said gita never teaches violence and if you look at gita closely then you find that gita doesn't teach you to do violence actually it teaches you karma yoga and it teaches you how to be detached because when arjuna is perplexed because you know he sees um, many of his dear and near ones in the opposite uh, side you know in the in the, in the enemy camp he he was destabilized you know what to do so krishna says you know be detached they are you know they are just souls they are not bodies and uh, you know even if they die the soul will not die so gandhi takes this from you know from the gita so why i am saying this because this is very uh, you know deeply linked with gandhi's idea of politics gandhi takes this karma yoga and the idea of detachment uh, from gita and he and he practices it okay so now going back to you know uh, the the idea of politics because we are discussing gandhi's political philosophy and i am talking about uh, religion why because this is so unavoidable that if you are talking about gandhi's politics you are, you have to talk about you know his his concept of spirituality his concept of morality which he you know uses synonymously he uses religion spirituality morality synonymously you know interchangeably so that's why sometimes you know you, you find me doing that so now um if you look at gandhi's concept of uh, politics you find that uh, you know there is this indispensable uh, element of individuality so art the center of gandhi's uh, notion of politics you find individual and individuality is the you know is the is the is the most indispensable part of gandhi's idea of politics and uh, why i am saying this i will read one sentence from gandhi this is related to, uh, this is concerning his idea of satyagraha what was satya for, for you know for, what was satyagraha for gandhi it was insistence upon truth you know holding on to truth mm, uh, that is the literal meaning so it, it was the uh, weapon to fight injustice it was the non violent weapon to fight injustice okay so gandhi says that uh, you know that uh, that satyagraha give me a second yeah so uh, he, he says that uh, satyagraha is i'm just not finding the line the the point that i want uh, to make is that satyagraha is a, a non violent weapon which is used to secure rights this is how gandhi understood uh, satyagraha and here rights rights are you know individual rights which are so central to the liberal conception of 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 the individual and if you look at liberalism why i am now so suddenly jumping to liberalism but because we have to you know talk about gandhi's political philosophy in a you know in a i mean we have to locate it we have to understand it in a wider spectrum of of political ideologies so what was gandhi 
or what was gandhism and how do uh, you know scholars locate gandhism many scholars have uh, uh, you know um, um, given this opinion that gandhi was a benevolent anarchist okay and um, if you go by the um, interpretation by somebody called uh, anthony parel who is a reputed gandhi scholar and uh, he says um uh, why why i am quoting him uh, um, because you know he is one of the authorities in the contemporary times regarding gandhi you know he is he 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 is he is recognized as a reputed gandhi scholar so and he writes that what gandhi offered in his political philosophy was uh, was a kind of liberalism and anthony parel makes a distinction between gandhian liberalism and the western liberalism that you associate with james john stuart mill with bentham you know with 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 others and why why this distinction because you know in the liberalism that you find in the west you know where it emerged there is this excessive focus on the negative you know liberty to use the word uh, by isaiah berlin and in gandhi's political philosophy you find although gandhi talks about individuality he doesn't emphasize on individualism and there is a distinction between individuality and individualism so gandhi puts a lot of emphasis on individuality but he doesn't talk about but he doesn't focus on individualism rather he, you know he is against it why because individuality and i now i i will read from gandhi one or two sentences gandhi says i quote i look upon an increase of the power of the state with the greatest fear because although while apparently doing good by minimizing exploitation it does the greatest harm to mankind by destroying individuality which lies at the root of all progress i repeat gandhi says individuality lies at the root of all progress so you find gandhi talking about individuality and uh, it is not individualism i i repeat so here the focus is on the creative side of the individual and uh, maybe you know you find a close link between this kind of freedom with the positive freedom uh, but positive freedom without the risk of running uh, into or without the risk of inviting uh, you know um, inviting autocracy you know inviting totalitarianism or uh, authoritarianism so you know gandhi offers a kind of positive freedom which is without authoritarianism because in positive freedom there is a risk that you know you also welcome or you also embrace uh, you know authoritarianism and that, you know that has happened so in gandhi you find a political philosophy according to anthony parel which is close to liberalism because it talks about individuality it talks about freedom it talks about uh, you know rights however gandhi's concept of rights is not without a focus on duties because gandhi says that without duties you know uh, rights cannot exist because you know rights are anchored upon duties if you are not talking about duties you expect only rights then you know it is not a long term affair you know you are going to lose it you know very soon so you have to focus on duties because if everyone takes care of the duty then rights will be automatically you know uh, taken care of so in you know this kind of a political philosophy which um, some people have called uh, you know a, a kind of um, you know um, um, anarchy um, but gandhi was not an anarchist why uh, he was not an anarchist although he uh, you know spent uh, a lot of time um, you know um, uh, uh, spending uh, you know i mean spending a lot of time on, on uh, movements against the state but he was not against the idea of state he you know when he was doing satyagraha when he was doing civil disobedience or non cooperation he you know he said that the satyagrahi 
you know anybody cannot become a satyagrahi there has to be a qualification so you can be a satyagrahi only when you have been a you know you have been an obedient citizen for a long time so you have earned the qualification to become a satyagrahi and uh, so so that is why gandhi was not a an anarchist he you know he he struggled against injustice and uh, you know uh, according to him um you know when gandhi talked about civil disobedience gandhi said and why i am talking about civil disobedience because uh, satyagraha is a broad uh, field where civil disobedience is a part and actually if satyagraha is a tree civil disobedience and non uh, non cooperation are, are are two branches so uh, what was uh, civil disobedience civil disobedience uh, you know each each the um, you know is the non violent breaking of a law which is made by the state and the objective should be a, a greater goal you know maybe a greater good that means strengthening the law itself so you are breaking the law because the law i mean the specific law is extremely unjust you know it is not thus that you know if if you feel that this law is unjust you you just go and break it no that you know uh, that that law has to be you know um, severely unjust you know uh, so that means uh, uh, you know you don't have the possibility of reforming it that's why you are you are you are you are uh, you know you are uh, just breaking it to make the state realize that you are not against the state you are against that specific law so gandhi was not a, a, you know an a, a, you know an anarchist so uh, his individuality um uh, um makes you know his emphasis on individuality makes him a liberal but to use the uh, you know formulation by anthony parel he is not a western liberal in the sense of the term but he was an indian liberal or he was a gandhian liberal or he was a liberal with you know focus on um, duties because liberalism doesn't focus on duties it focuses on rights however gandhi doesn't focus on rights he focuses on uh, duties but not at the cost of individuality because his aim was you know individuality um you know um and now to talk about gandhi's political model what he wanted for political india sorry independent india gandhi wanted a kind of decentralized polity um which you know at the center of which individual would be there and gandhi talked about a structure called oceanic circle he talked about a uh, structure called oceanic circle what is a oceanic circle to make it simple let's understand it like this you go to uh, you know a, a water body you stay outside the water body maybe a pond uh, you know like odia ratan the gadia ba pokhari whatever you call it you just uh, throw a uh, you know um, stone into that um, uh, water body Uh, uh, maybe you know uh, towards the middle of the uh, water body what you find is that waves will be generated and this will be generated at the center and this will move towards the shore okay towards the land this is oceanic circle that means uh, a circle which generates at the center and it you know it moves towards the shore so what does uh, this have to do with uh, the political structure gandhi said you know if you are uh, like uh, most i mean all of you are political science students you might have already uh, read the public administration paper uh, so you know you know the uh, principles of public administration or the organization that is you know the post corp so you you know you and you also know uh, what is hierarchy it's a period, uh, you know pyramidal structure so uh, gandhi's gandhi's uh, you know what gandhi envisaged for independent in india was a oceanic circle kind of thing where the political structure will not be vertical it will be horizontal like oceanic circle and uh, what is oceanic circle it is ever ascending sorry ever expanding but never ascending what is ascending ascending is vertical expanding is always horizontal so the kind of political authority that gandhi wanted for independent india was a kind of horizontal power structure you know 
where it, you know it will be uh, focusing on decentralization and at the root or at the center will be individual so it is a self sufficient individual you know living in a self sufficient village and uh, this power structure will expand you know to make a polity to make a nation state but not at the cost of individual so the structure that gandhi envisaged was was not a vertical power structure it was a you know horizontal power structure which is ever expanding but never ascending so uh, this is what gandhi's you know political model uh, 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 you know um, uh, was uh, based on now uh, talking about uh, uh, swaraj what is what is what is swaraj swaraj uh, swaraj according to gandhi if you see gandhi was not a systematic political philosopher still we read him in political science syllabus uh, in india and also you know elsewhere in the world why because although he was not a systematic political philosopher in this you know real sense of the term but he has offered some uh, you know writings uh, on specific themes which are um, you know which are the subject matter of political philosophy so and uh, the central text that we read for gandhi's political philosophy is hind swaraj and this was a text which was written by gandhi in 1909 and uh, uh, this was uh, written in a dialogue format between the reader and the editor and where the reader is asking about you know many questions and the editor is you know giving answer to to all the questions and in this book uh, gandhi gives uh, you know gandhi actually um analyzes a lot of problems which were there in the then india he is basically diagnosing uh, or analyzing the the cause of india's slavery or the cause of india's on freedom and in the same book he is giving solution to it what you need to do to actually uh you know gain back the freedom that you have lost reflecting the argument uh, uh, by leo tolstoy gandhi says that india did not um you know uh, uh, you know it is not that the british people took india's freedom india actually gave its freedom to the british and there is a difference between these two sentences if i say that british people took india's freedom and uh, you know somebody else is saying that no actually it is the vice versa indians gave their freedom to the british uh, so gandhi here reflects the argument made by leo tolstoy uh, because tolstoy also held the same uh, opinion gandhi says that uh, you know that indians lost their freedom because of their weakness and here gandhi is not pointing towards uh, you know physical weakness or armed you know or or weakness related to the armed forces here he is talking about the spiritual you know weakness the moral weakness gandhi says that you know you you are a slave only when you accept that you know the other one is your master you lose your freedom only when you lose you know in your heart you know it is you know somebody can capture you somebody can put you in prison but he cannot make a slave out of yourself unless and until you accept so gandhi says you you may die but you, you know you may not lose your freedom so indians lost their freedom not because of you know indians lost the uh, armed struggle no they lost their freedom because they accepted british people as their masters they started using british institutions like railways like parliament like law courts like you know modern medicine system so you know you gave legitimacy to them as as your masters and uh, you know th that is when you lost your freedom you did not lose your freedom you know in a in a in a in a in a specific battle between the indian you know kings and uh, the uh, the the british people so it is it is not that you know the battle of plassey or the you know uh, or any other battle was not the deciding factor gandhi as is not rejecting it as a historical fact he is saying it is more important that you realize it is not your defeat in the battle but your acceptance uh, of british people and their institutions of modern civilization that the moment you you know uh, 
uh, fell prey to the insinuations or the attractions of the modern civilization, that moment you lost your freedom. And how do you get it back? You have to assert your spiritual and moral freedom. How do you do it? You know, people like um, um, Faisal Devji. Faisal Devji wrote uh, uh, a book called The Impossible Indian. And this is regarding Gandhi. And the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just forgetting uh, another author who wrote a book in Hindi and the and it was regarding Gandhi and the book's title is Gandhi Ek Asambhav Parikalpana. And why this, you know, what is this impossibility? Gandhi, it is not that Gandhi, you know, gave something new to the world. Because Gandhi himself has written that uh, truth and non-violence are as old as hills. I have nothing new to offer to this world. So then why Gandhi uh, was, you know, regarded as one of the um, greatest uh, human beings by, 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 by many people, you know, maybe, um, um, you know, if you, um, you know, if you, if you, if you take Tagore, if you, um, you know, take Bose, um, you know, be it Einstein, there are many people who thought, you know, Gandhi, I mean, why, why, why then Gandhi is known as a Mahatma? Not because he taught anything new, but because, because what are, you know, the most important principles that Gandhi, you know, lived with truth and non-violence. These were not invented by Gandhi. Okay. So why Gandhi was then a, a great soul? Because for the first time he taught and he showed to the world that it is possible that you, you know, apply truth and non-violence, not at the individual level, but at a collective level, because by that time, Gandhi or you know till that time uh, truth and non-violence were regarded as individual virtues and these virtues had no you know place in politics at least from the times of uh, you know Machiavelli when we you know thought that you know that, that was the beginning of the modern conception of politics so you know starting with Machiavelli we, we, we have the conception of politics which is independent of morality and politics Gandhi for the first time made us realize it. And you know, he proved to the world that yes, it is possible to apply truth and non-violence at a mass scale. And you know, you so and Gandhi also showed to the world that you know individual cannot be uh, you know, uh, I mean you cannot be different selves. If you are a good human being in your private sphere. The same has to be reflected in the public sphere. You cannot be a great father and a great husband, and then you know, then you you are a great, you know, you are a corrupt civil servant or you are a bad teacher. This is not possible. If you are true to yourself, your trueness will be reflected in all the human, you know, spheres. It is not that in one sphere you are good and in the other sphere you are bad. No. Yes, you may be, you know, I mean, see. So what does that mean? That if you are truthful, if you are non-violent. It will uh, it will also be reflected in other spheres of human life. And here we need to talk about the link between individual regeneration and collective re regeneration. That means when you become a great human being, at the same time you are also, you know, uh, taking along with you the entire world, the entire nation. That means collective regeneration or national regeneration. It's possible only when individual regeneration is done honestly and sincerely. And uh, interestingly, I will uh, here I will um, uh, read one or two sentences again from Gandhi, and this is very interesting. Um, yes, yes. Um, this is this is from uh, Anthony Parrell's. Uh, you know, um, edited uh, version of um, Hin Swaraj, published by Cambridge University Press. Okay, so um, yeah. In short, Hin Swaraj, besides being a dialogue on Swaraj, is also an intensely spiritual and intensely practical book. One that teaches that there is a link between inner life and outer achievement, 
that individual regeneration and national regeneration constitute one continuum. However difficult the task of bringing about our outward transformation may appear to be, there is always something that the concerned individual can do and that is to try to bring out, bring about his or her inner transformation. So, you know, there was this uh, friend of Gandhi's who once asked, uh, you know, who once wrote to Gandhi that uh, what can one individual do to emancipate India? This was a question posed by one of Gandhi's friends to, to Gandhi. And she wrote to Gandhi, I quote, please do not carry unnecessarily on your head the burden of emancipating India, unquote. What was Gandhi's reply? I quote, emancipate your own self. Even that burden is very great. Apply everything to yourself. Nobility of soul consists in realizing that you are yourself India. In your emancipation is the emancipation of India. All else is make believe. What does it mean? Why I quoted this long, uh, you know, paragraph? Just to make one point that, you know, and this is regarding the critical part now because the topic of what was given to me was, you know, the critical appreciation. See, there is always this doubt on Gandhi's, on, 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 you know, Gandhian method that, uh, you know, this is uh, not very realistic, this is not practical. Um, so the answer is that when Gandhi uh, started this Dandi march, the short Satyagraha, you know, people laughed at him that this person has gone mad and, uh, you know, what this pinch of salt will do to India's cause of freedom, you know. But then the Congress leadership could not afford to lose Gandhi because they knew that Gandhi knew the pulse of the nation. He knew what the nation wants. And uh, because, you know, people uh, associated with him, you know, after Gandhi's joining of Congress, uh, the, the membership, uh, you know, increased manifold. And, uh, you know, so Gandhi's followers, most of them did not believe in Gandhi's many, you know, faiths. And, but they did not, or, you know, or they could not afford to lose Gandhi. That is why, although they were not very happy about what Gandhi was doing, whether it was, you know, uh, stopping the movement after, uh, you know, after Chori Chora or, you know, or, um, or um, uh, you know, taking this Dandi Yatra. Nobody was convinced. And, you know, interestingly, when Gandhi wrote this book, Hind Swaraj, which I was discussing just before some time, Gandhi's, most of Gandhi's close associates and followers thought that this is something which deserves to be in the garbage or, you know, waste, you know, the, 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 uh, the, um, the bin, you know, the, um, why? Even, you know, Gokhale, uh, to, to name a few Gokhale, um, you know, um, 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 uh, Nehru, nobody believed in that book. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, and uh, Nehru also held that view uh, even after, you know, independence. So that is why you find, uh, and uh, I argued, um, you know, uh, I mean, I argue um, this, that Gandhi's morality or the moral Gandhi was projected by the neo colon uh, you know, or, or the, sorry, or the, the, the post-colonial state or the newly independent state because the state needed a kind of legitimacy, you know, to make this person the father of uh, the nation and then, you know, jettisoning everything that the person wanted, you know, like, uh, a, a, you know, a decentralized uh, polity, or you know or, or uh, spiritualized politics so this is not what was witnessed in modern india and the uh, and the kind of uh, you know industrialization that gandhi wanted in india this is not what happened in modern india so i argue that uh, you know gandhi's moral or the moral gandhi or the spiritual gandhi was uh, projected with much more uh, you know force um, 
um, you know, as compared to the other Gandhi, that is the political Gandhi. Although I, you know, uh, I myself said uh, before some time that, um, you know, this, this kind of a distinction is not very tenable because Gandhi thought that, you know, politics and uh, morality or spirituality so, uh, you know, should go hand in hand. But what we have done is that we have, um, you know, emphasized much on these twin principles of truth and non-violence because it's very easy to do without, you know, really practicing them. We can just, you know, talk about them. We can go talking about them. And we have exalted Gandhi to a level which is like, you know, uh, like a god. So, you know, this deification of Gandhi's belief in truth and non-violence has also been uh, accompanied by a simultaneous process. And this process is erosion of the political Gandhi. What is this political Gandhi? When I call the political Gandhi, it is a focus or an emphasis on protest movement on non-violent protest you know when you when you uh, when you challenge any unjust law so the so the non-violent protest or the idea of you know uh, uh, resisting the injustice with non-violence that has to you know maybe that that has not been given adequate uh, uh, you know attention like the other principles associated with the political gandhi like you know maybe the oceanic circle you know the um, the 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 environment of the villages and uh, you know many other things which are associated with the gandhi's idea of politics uh, so and uh, regarding the question how relevant uh, gandhi is there are many things which gandhi um, you know, uh, said or believed in, but, uh, you know, everything is not uh, relevant because nothing is, uh, you know, um, I mean, nothing is actually static uh, or, 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 or uh, because the world uh, is not static and, you know, the uh, situation, I mean, the, um, so you cannot hold on to many things because somebody has said this okay so let's be clear about this i mean this, this is what i i feel that you cannot take everything that gandhi has uh, said but at the same time you have to also realize one thing that because the kind of um, you know uh, um, themes that gandhi took whether it, you know in his writings or in his you know campaigns in his movements these are of perennial relevance you know struggling against injustice uh, by you know by non violent methods this is something which is the uh, which is the true contribution which is the real contribution of uh, gandhi and uh, you know the growing number of non violent movements across the globe has reinforced uh, this belief. Um, I'm forgetting the name. There, there, there is a uh, you know uh, a scholar who has worked on this. Um, I'm just forgetting the name. You know, she has done a um, uh, research on this. You know how effective the non-violent movements are as compared to the violent ones, and he, and she has proved or she has shown that uh, if you take into account the uh, the movements of the last uh, century, or to be specific, uh, the last uh, you know uh, 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 the the last fifty years, you find that the non-violent movements have been more effective in changing regimes as compared to the violent ones. So this actually reinforces the belief in uh, the. Uh, you know uh, the Gandhian method of satyagraha of non-violent method be it uh, you know uh, you know many many people have actually been um, you know been um, influenced by Gandhi be it Aung San Suu Kyi be it uh, you know um, uh, 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 Nelson Mandela then you know uh, uh, King Martin Luther King Jr and there are many you know more um, uh, Danilo Dolce th there are so many around the world who 
have taken this uh, you know very seriously and uh, they have been successful in their movements this is one the second thing that is also of perennial uh, relevance is the emphasis on individuality that was so dear to gandhi in his conception of freedom in his conception of swaraj because for gandhi swaraj was not the outer freedom you know it was uh, or, or or self government for gandhi swaraj was self rule when you fo focus on your development not material development but spiritual development at the and simultaneously you are you know Im improving the you know uh, the uh, the uh, the condition of the society so i think there are so many things which you can um, associate with gandhi who, which are of perennial relevance and um, yes as i said everything um, uh, uh, you know um, talked by gandhi or you know every, every, everything uh, written by gandhi or said by gandhi i i do not think that you know we can take, take everything without a critical approach nobody should be um, you know uh, i mean see the moment you treat somebody uh, like god what you do is that you make that person less practicable means you are saying that this person is a god so we cannot practice what he has said so that should not happen so gandhi was a mortal human being he had his own you know uh, failures and if you read the, uh, gandhi's autobiography he has uh, you know uh, he has written it without uh, i mean i mean he to the extent that gandhi has gone to uh, when he was writing his autobiography and giving the details to that level this is on paralleled in human history so um, you know so uh, there gandhi is writing you know uh, what are his failures and it is not only what gandhi has written about himself if you objectively read his life there are so many things where gandhi has failed um, uh, so uh, you know so it is not that i am saying that everything that gandhi said uh, has to be you know um, you know are, are 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 relevant but yes the central ideas that gandhi dealt with are of perennial uh, relevance and nobody can uh, you know deny that whether you agree with it or you know you know you, you do not agree but uh, you know you cannot ignore these ideas so i stop here and i would love to take questions uh, you know in in uh, anything that i related to anything that i discussed in this lecture or anything related to gandhi but not related to very fa you know not not related to facts but related to political philosophy because i may be wrong some you know sometimes when it comes to you know uh, f uh, maybe the year you know may maybe the numbers but yes if it is re related to gandhi's philosophy definitely you know you are most welcome you can uh, ask any question okay thank you dr dhal so i am using doctor but uh, smriti bhaiya uh, i'm not a doctor yet uh, yes not a doctor but i'm i'm saying it due to the you know quality of person he is oh thank you for in the kind sense words. in that sense i'm using it so since it is not a web talk i think um, i will not moderate i will not ask questions or my doubts to you but uh, since it is a class it's all about you and my student my students are also your students now pradeep you initiate uh you know dialogue discussion debate disagreement doubts observation with the uh with smriti bhaiya right you may start pradeep pradeep is one of the good student uh, in his batch okay maybe maybe he he can be the university topper also there is possibility that is great i think i think all students are good so it is uh, not just about the performance so everyone true. can <laughs> you know i you know uh, i'll be happy if you ask questions okay good evening sir thank you so much sir for this wonderful class and sir i have a small query that uh, as you have mentioned in an oceanic circle power to be flow in a horizontal manner where individual will be at the center and sir my query is that uh, where as you have also mentioned that gandhi is not against the idea of state then where uh, where the state to be lies and what about the 
in at what level of the Westernic circle the national and international society okay so this is an interesting question if uh, himanshu allows i i, I can uh, take yeah it. of course okay you take uh, you answer the question okay and in the meanwhile let other students think about their doubt or question yes yes that will be great so this is an interesting question <laughs> because i can't uh, answer it satisfactorily that is my answer but uh, this is not to evade the question i'll answer it gandhi is not giving a blueprint of the oceanic circle and uh, he is saying that the individual lies in the center of the oceanic circle and uh, it should expand horizontally that means at the end of the villages you know you 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 find uh, you know then more villages and this 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 i mean this expands and gandhi is not rejecting the idea of a parliament although he was very critical uh, you know of the british parliament in hind swaraj and he thought you know by using um, carlyle swad and so many other people's uh, you know reflections on the british parliament he is actually rejecting the idea of the parliament because he thinks that you know it, it's a, it's a it's a um, talking shop and you know and uh, he 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 has even gone to the extent of you know saying that it was a um, you know like uh, li li like a, like a prostitute or a barren um, woman so but you see a transformation of gandhi's ideas or a change in gandhi's ideas in course of time so by the 1940s gandhi might have realized that it is you know impracticable or impossible now to go back to a polity where there will be no state so gandhi uh, you know now talks about parliament more liberally so you know you so you do not find the state in the oceanic circle because gandhi is not talking about uh, the state uh, you know where the state is located in that oceanic circle but you can understand this you know the the entire thing is a state the oceanic circle is a state so this state is not somewhere to be found because if you find the state you are centralizing the moment you find the state means you are finding the state because it is a centralized state so gandhi talks about a state where the state is the entire oceanic circle at the same time uh, nobody is you know superior to others so you know it is like in the you know the village has the same power like the like the state that means the state is um, you know uh, so gandhi thought that the state should not uh, you know uh, be gandhi did not want a gigantic state you know a huge centralized state he wanted a decentralized state where the village will be very powerful and all the villages will be self sufficient and uh, you know the kind of economy that we are witnessing now gandhi did not want this kind of economy so gandhi wanted uh, you know the state the parliament to be there gandhi has talked you know talked about non violent army and non violent police but um, if you ask you know to locate the state in the oceanic circle i'll you know i am unable to do that because even gandhi did not talk about that and um, so i do not know whether the answer has satisfied you or not but there is no satisfactory answer actually to this question uh, because the state is the oceanic circle you are not finding the state in in a specific point in the in the oceanic circle uh so okay thank you can any, the any entire in so can the entire international system you know they can make a single unit you are asking about uh, whether gandhi wanted a world federation or not or a, you know world uh, with a single government do you, do you have that kind of a question in mind yes sir no gandhi did not gandhi wanted 
you know countries to be uh, you know uh, there he did not want a world federation at the cost of you know um, individual countries and there you have a difference between gandhi and tagore gandhi uh, see tagore also participated in swadeshi movement but after some uh, time he got disillusioned because of the violence because of the mob violence so tagore became or tagore tilted more towards internationalism and um, gandhi was a nationalist i am not saying tagore was not not a nationalist but the, the tagore was more tilted towards internationalism and gandhi said that how the globe or how the world uh, will develop if you do not focus on the individual units so gandhi wanted each individual to flourish each individual to you know to develop morally and so that the village will develop and because the and when the village uh, will develop then the country will develop and likewise you know the um, the uh, the uh, society will develop you know the the whole world will develop so you cannot talk about swadeshi if you are talking about a you know i mean so there is the notion of a country there is the notion of your specific country and it is india for gandhi so you know gandhi did not want in the internationalism at the cost of nationalism so thank you any any other question students you want to ask actually uh, you know to be specific to give a specific answer to your question if you want uh, if you want what was gandhi's political you know what was uh, the political structure envisaged by gandhi um, uh, you know for independent india it is wrong to say that you know there was no blueprint but uh, you know he had something there is something called gandhi's uh last will what is a will you know the document which where we write about our you know what we want after our death that that's a will so this document which is popularly known was uh, known as uh, gandhi's last will um was written by gandhi um you know in the in the early morning of the day when he was shot dead and this was probably the last document that he wrote that is why it is known as gandhi's last will uh, so this was in the morning of 30th january that gandhi wrote this document and interestingly this document was the draft constitution of congress gandhi wanted the congress to be disbanded as a political party and uh, you know it should work as a uh, organization focusing on constructive program okay so because by that time gandhi realized that uh, you know corruption has entered uh, uh, you know and uh, people are now trying to uh, maybe capitalize the name and fame that they have earned during the uh, you know national movement and uh, you know people are now hankering after power so everybody wants power uh, and uh, so gandhi thought that people will capitalize the name of congress and they will try to take benefit of this and they will do corruption more and more corruption because that was the starting that that was getting started then so gandhi wanted Cong you know congress to be disbanded as a political party and to focus more on constructive works in that document actually gandhi has talked about uh, you know the the kind of political structure that he wanted for political india So for so for for independent India, and you can uh, read that document. You just type Gandhi's last will. This will come, you know, in the go in in the in the in the internet. But uh, with Himanshu's permission, I'll just take two to three minutes because interesting question raised by Pradeep. So so that you can have a you know uh, rough idea of, of what Gandhi's political structure for independent India would like to be. So um, you know um, every panchayat and i quote gandhi every panchayat of five adult men or women being villagers or village minded shall form a unit two such contiguous panchayats shall form a working party under a leader elected from amongst themselves 
where when there are 100 such panchayats the 50 first grade leaders shall elect from among themselves a second grade leader and so on the first grade leaders meanwhile working under the second grade leader parallel groups of 200 panchayats shall continue to be formed till they cover the whole of india each succeeding group of panchayats electing a second grade leader after the manner of the first all second grade leaders shall serve jointly for the whole of india and severally for their respective areas the second grade leaders may elect whenever they deem necessary from among themselves a chief who will during pleasure regulate and command all the groups i stop here so this is the kind of polity that gandhi wanted uh, you know to be there in independent india uh, so okay thank you i think uh, any any other student uh, who wants to ask question to the speaker you get questions when either you know there are uh, no uh, doubts or there are so many doubts that you know the student is uh, perplexed that what question i'll ask i i could not get anything so <laughs> <laughs> you know the you know the mentality what i have i am no, either they have understood everything or they have understood nothing so yeah. of course everything nobody can understand <laughs> so important yes, this thing is, is this that, is just a lighter note uh, no, this is this is also true i mean what we see we must say it this is gandhi but i have one doubt uh, in your in your talk you said that uh, if you are a good teacher then you are good in every other social economic political cultural in all those sphere uh, now i think how to understand it if i am a bad husband then does it mean that I am a bad teacher? Or if I am a good teacher, does it mean that I am a good husband? Yes, uh, from you... a Gandhian point of view, the answer is yes. But from our point of view, the answer may not be yes. Why I am saying this? You can uh, you know, understand it when you look at Gandhi's life itself. There is this book, uh, I am just forgetting the author. Uh, the book's title is Gandhi's Prisoner. And it is about Gandhi's son. Gandhi's eldest son was disowned by Gandhi. He converted uh, to Islam and uh, he did everything which Gandhi, uh, you know, uh, would not like him to do. Like, you know, he went to brothels. He, you know, he was into drinking, you know, um, he, he was, uh, you know, uh, he he took a lot of loans, you know, he borrowed a lot of money. Um, he was into gambling. He did everything that Gandhi would dislike and he did it deliberately, you know, just to take uh, a kind of, you know, a kind of revenge against his father. Mm -hmm. He, you know, you, you watch that movie, it beautifully portrays that relationship and the movie's name is, I think, Gandhi, my father where uh, maybe Akshay Khanna plays the role played by, you know, a role of his son. So this, you know, this relationship, if you look at it, and if you look at uh, the relationship between Gandhi and his wife, you know, most of us would say that Gandhi was not a good father. Gandhi never sent his uh, children to former schools. He was so adamant. If you, if you read Gandhi's autobiography, and I, I think everyone uh, should read it, it's, it's an interesting reading. If you read Gandhi's autobiography, you find, you know, when Gandhi's wife was on the, you know, I mean, she was fighting for life. The doctor suggested that non veg, uh, you know, soup and some no, you know, medicines containing. Uh, you know, um, animal fat or, you know, something I mean, like that should be given to Kasturba. Um, Gandhi said, uh, no, they, you know, I mean, he doesn't want it. Then he thought for some time, he thought that, you know, he should not decide. He then asked uh, his wife who was on a deathbed um, or he was struggling for life. 
and also his uh, children and because they knew gandhi so nobody dared to say that you know no we want uh, to i mean she should uh, leave so let's uh, give that medicine nobody said that so gandhi you know gandhi was happy that okay everybody is uh, you know thinking on my line actually they were not thinking on his line maybe you know they were just not uh, um, you know they 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 did not uh, you know find it uh, uh, very um, easy to say uh, that you know they they want life and not these principles and the same thing happened uh, with uh, one of his sons when uh, you know and gandhi treated him you know his his, his son and this was no, you know like the, his son was having high fever and he was doing some you know some nature uh, therapy you know like putting uh, you know uh, him in the um, uh, uh, you know ice uh, you know like you know ice putting ice inside a uh, cloth and you know i mean doing all those nature therapy what i'm trying to make here is that if you look at gandhi's life you find a person who was trying to live what he believed and uh, here you have a person who was not a great reader but what he and he was a very haphazard reader you know he would just pick books like that you know like you know these books came to him in course of his his his, his time like books on vegetarianism books on village life books on you know uh, civilization books on um, uh, the british rule so what he was doing is that he was reading uh, some books and you know whatever he found interesting he tried to practice that you know in his life like he was heavily influenced by john roskin and uh, you know he started living uh, in in ashrams up, uh, after reading roskin's book on to this last what i'm trying to argue here is that you find here a person who was living his life according to some principles that he believed in no matter whether his family members liked it or not and uh, you know his you know his eldest son did not like it at all he said you know you may be a mahatma of, for for all but what have you done for for me he wanted a sifaris you know to go to um, you know when he wanted a job gandhi never gave it he wanted you know that gandhi should uh, send him to uh, you know uh, to the west to, for uh, for the studies gandhi never did that so the point here is that gandhi was very you know gandhi was a strict disciplinarian when it came to his his life and his family members life and at least his immediate you know family members his wife and his uh, four sons so the point here is that when himanshu i said that you know according to gandhi you have to be you know if you are a good i mean this is just this is not exactly what gandhi said but yes this is you know this is just a paraphrase of what gandhi said if you are a good human being so let it let it put you know this way if you are a good human being you are good in all your spheres whether people like you or not that's a different thing so if you are a good husband you are a good human being you cannot be a good husband you know by you know if you are a bad human being so if i am saying a good teacher good teacher means you you are trying to be a good teacher you are not you know you you are not compromising with the quality of teaching at least from your point of view you know you are you are you are preparing for each class you are taking all the classes you know you are, you are not going to the class without preparation no matter how knowledgeable you are now you are taking each class like an examination you are you are you are you know you are enjoying each class so and you cannot do that if you are not a honest human being so if you are honest you are a good see you if you are honest you are honest in all spheres of life you cannot be uh, my point my point is that when i am saying uh, a good husband then who should decide that whether you will decide that you are a good husband or your wife will decide that you are a good husband i Definitely. know if if you are a good human being then who will decide that you are a good human being you or the others uh, gandhi's answer is that Uh, there are some principles which are objective principles um, like truth and non-violence. Or although Gandhi, uh, you know, believed that uh, truth may be, you know, perceived by different persons differently, but it cannot be like that. You know, I mean, uh, see, for example, when you are saying I am a truthful person, so whether the world, uh, you know. takes you as a, uh, or whether the world receives you as a truthful person is a different thing but if you know uh, that you are a good person 
you don't need others certificate so th that way gandhi would say that for me what is important is what i think about myself okay but then it has to taste it had it, you know see like gandhi thought whatever you are claiming it has to be tested with these two principles truth and non violence whatever you know you forget others forget what certificate others are giving to you if you are uh, you know um, you know if you are convinced that what you are doing is right uh, so you know you may not think about uh, you know what others uh, think about you because you know that you are you are you know not selfish you are truthful and you have you have uh, you know you have not uh, and you yes you will you will be able to do that only when you are like you know somebody like gandhi who is like a moral exemplar you are not preaching you are practicing what you are saying only then you acquire you earn that authority to say that yes i am truthful you know it, it, it is not that everybody can you know pronounce that okay i am truthful and i do, don't care about what others think about me no you have to get to that stature when you can claim that you know moral exemplar uh sip oh okay well, thank you i was thinking something else no you can, you can please please, please <laughs> go go ahead so i just forgot actually when i just had so you sorry I, 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 I was in a flow so i just uh, <laughs> went along with, with it so i think that when you said that uh, if you are speaking truth i mean the person who is speaking truth he is always a friend he is a friend of wife he is a friend of student he is a friend of enemy also right you, you can be the friend of enemy if you are speaking truth to your enemy and so far as this violence is concerned i think uh, if you are not harming others or if you are not having intention to harm others then um, uh, you you are following uh, the non violence principle uh, but coming back to the family life of gandhi so far as uh, his the perspective of his elder son is concerned then uh, don't you think that gandhi did a violence against his elder son um if I, you are not if you I are not would, giving a reference letter yeah i i i would not say uh, it was violence because you know gandhi tried to you know see if when i said that you know uh, it is like uh, what is detachment is like remaining within the household like water on lotus leaf you will be in household but you will not give an extra treatment for your for your near and dear ones let them stand on their own why would you need, need a reference letter because gandhi's uh, experience of this was really bitter uh, you know before that one you know when if he if i ask the same question ki why gandhi ji was preferring muslim than over uh, hindus i mean let the muslim stand with their own life when when did, you know th this is this is yeah, so far is as like communal so far as communal harmony is concerned so gandhi is always supporting the weaker no when did gandhi said that you know i you know gandhi gandhi was never condescending you know when it comes to uh, you know muslims and gandhi never uh, you know uh, you know this is something which is a myth uh, you know uh, when you know when uh, uh, and, and what uh, let me let me say you this example that gandhi when there was a conflict between jina and nehru that who will be the you know prime minister and gandhi wanted okay let jina become the prime minister hey, why this soft corner i mean the principle what you are applying for your uh, you know own children you could have applied the same principle in the public life also yeah he did that he 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 did that um see uh, i i i see when it comes to um, you know treating a religious minority the approach is that you know if uh, the majority sh is in a position that if you do good will it it will come back so that that can explain you know the and uh, because gandhi himself was a uh, you know hindu so definitely you know and it was gandhi's nature that you know you 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 know you you give to the other you you do not assert 
you know for your own interest because that that's how you build harmony that's how you build unity and that's how you actually you know whenever you, you know how you become great you become great by sacrificing not by asserting and it is not that you are you are giving up your self respect you are giving up something worldly and gandhi never uh, thought that you know a political power mattered so that way and i don't know exactly what uh, um, incident you were saying or when gandhi said that let jina become uh, the prime minister but yes you know even if that was the case so this was the logic okay so thank you i mean uh, let's i mean move i just want let it be like the I mean, this let let us not take any decision that uh, whether gandhi's private life is uh, you know and public life both are similar or both are different right so if i'll just make this statement that whether gandhi's private life is similar to public life or not then people will divide it no no uh, himanshu it was similar whether we like it or not whether he was a good father whether he was a good husband that is a different thing but what he did in public life he he did that in private life you know you take the example of you know for example when gandhi was returning from south africa and uh, there are so many gifts given to them um, and uh, you know kasturba wanted okay to- let me let me let me you know uh, let me challenge you right on you know whatever you have said it that you told when kasturba was fighting on the death bed then uh, you know gandhi asked that whether she should be or she should take the non veg as a kind of medicine uh, then everybody didn't react and gandhi thought that okay all are thinking about uh, thinking like me so this is a incident that happened w- with gandhi in his private sphere uh, i mean is gandhi practice the same thing in the public i mean in that example you, you, you yes, said that gandhi, gandhi 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 never used double standard in his public and private life whether we act, you know whether we like it or not yes he was you know he was she was using the same standard that is why he you know i mean uh, you 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 never find gandhi's uh, successors his his own family members you know is anybody in 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 in, in hmm, politics that's a fact that's a fact so you know i mean he was uh, he was selfless to the extent possible he uh, so i mean are see, you are you saying that gandhi was very adamant in the public also yeah you can say that i mean adamant will not be a right word but yes he was rigid uh, on on many occasions you know like uh, see you take the example of uh, the pune pact was mm-hmm. ambedkar uh, uh, you know a changed person when he agreed to what gandhi was saying because it was no. gandhi's rigidity uh so uh, you know the, let's accept that so uh, ambedkar was not a changed man you know when he was agreeing to gandhi's dima, you know um, what gandhi was saying so uh, it is because you know he, he you know he, he was maybe you know he he was maybe uh, you know maybe the what uh, uh, ambedkar thought that you know if this continues and this person the, doesn't stop fasting maybe you know if something happens to him then the public opinion will not be very favorable for the cause of the you know dalits so yeah. that's how he has to give in so it is not that he changed his mind so gandhi was you know very rigid in 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 many you know aspects so it is you know so and that was that was gandhi and that was gandhi and see even if you whether you like him or not he was honest he was he was sincere and he was the same man whether it was his public life whether it was his is 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 his private life so that is that most of us would agree um uh, so whether we like it or not that's a different thing now that's true actually i mean to become gandhi is very difficult but if you are becoming you know like gandhi then you have to face many challenges today mane jodi aaj bhi gandhi banchi thante tenu aaj gandhi ahuri beshi koshto pai thante the kind of uh, you know atmosphere the kind of human nature has already changed gandhi to arambhru bhavi nei tile jo din you know last wish jo ta apan kahile to se wish re thila ki congress ko dissolve kar dio to aaji congress jo dirgho 70 barsho asilani puni ta pai jo bjp ta pai puni aam aadmi jo chali chi jo total process e total process re gandhi 
जदि बंची था स्वराज को देख पार जदि बंची था सर्वोदय को फिल भी कर से वेदर स्टेट हो कि सोशल मूवमेंट हो कि मार्केट हो सबुरी भितरे किसी ना कि करपसन यू नो गली के रही तो आई थिंक दिज ए भेरी नाइस वे ऑफ एंडिंग यू नो गांधी कैन नॉट बी यू नो एंडेड बट समेर यू हैव टू पुट ए फुल स्टॉप सो आई होप दैट स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन बेनिफिटेड बाय योर टॉक and uh, that's how i think we need to read gandhi whenever we are reading gandhi uh, two things is very important one is understanding the concept but content of gandhi and the other thing is that understanding the context of gandhi and the third thing let me add that when you are reading gandhi you should contextual contextualize gandhi today how far gandhi will help you how far gandhi will help you uh mane as a student how you are getting the help from the gandhi as a statesman how you are getting the help of the gandhi so that's how i think we must read each and every philosopher this philosophy uh is uh you know necessary uh from kon din abala vriddha vanita choto ru bado porjonto you know gandhi has something to tell you and there is the relevance of gandhi in your life right a child can also uh, you know learn from gandhi a youth can also learn from gandhi a old man can also learn from gandhi so no doubt uh, he is not a theoretician like hobbes locke rousseau or plato or aristotle but somehow gandhi is an alternative if you see the directive principles of state policy then you will find you know people have categorized it into three categories socialist principle liberal principle and the other one is the gandhian principle Now, this Gandhi is a very important category, right? So I think uh, that's a uh, that is something that great we are having Gandhi with us, and we should be proud uh, of that, and we should be thankful. I think Pradeep, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, Pradeep, I think it's not a since it is not a web talk. I will not ask you to give a vote of thanks, but since uh, the speaker is, you know. giving a lecture to your class i think uh, it's a it's a duty in the gandhian sense uh, from your side to give a kind of you know thanks to this speaker now i am putting that responsibility on your shoulder you do it on behalf of all okay sir thank you thank you so much sir ओके प्रदीप प्रदीप आर यू देयर ही इज देयर आई थिंक सम टेक्निकल इश्यूज ओके इट हार्डली आई इट्स ओके नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम सो आई थिंक वी शुड वाइंड अप एवरीथिंग सो थैंक यू यू नीड टू गिव अ फॉर्मल थैंक्स यू नो आई आई एम रियली ऑनर्ड टू स्पीक दैट्स ट्रू आई मीन इट्स अ इट्स अ ट्रेनिंग फॉर आवर स्टूडेंट्स आल्सो they are also you know learning how to speak in the public you know in giving vote of thanks they are also fighting with their you know kind of nervous yeah, yes. kind true, of true. fear true. so there are there are purposes so whatever i do there is always a purpose no, I, I, i i i realize that and, it, uh, and we are doing a wonderful so thing. so thank you smriti bhaiya i think uh, uh, you have become the part and parcel of this of my academic family and uh, i mean you didn't deny you gave two talks then i requested to take a class and you agreed with that now this is something the uh, the you know the nature of a true academician so this is the beginning i think uh, i wish that upon a sigra upon a phd complete karantu upon a sigra professor hontu and out ke ame dui pad out dui pad ame academics ko agoku nei ki jiba and i am also planning to uh, you know do a kind of uh, informal a kind of informal organization those who are uh, thinking on the betterment of political science especially we want to create a kind of civil society uh, you know in in odisha the way it is there in bengal the way it is there in gujarat also the boroda you know university of boroda borodra 
you can find uh, academicians they are coming together they are forming a civil society and they are uh, you know they are in a position to influence the government also right so we the intellectual must influence the government it's not about you know discussing idea with uh, each other it is also about thinking about certain concrete solution concrete step this is also our responsibility so i think uh, this is my vision and uh, when people like you around us i think uh, we can achieve that vision so thank you very much on behalf of all student as they as i am the teacher of 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 this student i think on behalf of them i am grateful and thankful to you so so thank you very much and good night good night thank you so much for the kind words and i'm really honored to be you know uh, talking to your student thank you and yes bye bye okay then okay then.